I didn't know much about Petrarch before coming here to Arezzo, had never read any of his work before, but for whatever reason, I thought that because he was a writer and I'm a writer, that I would find some connection with him in his birthplace, and that I could make a documentary about finding said connection. I was wrong. I had envisioned the film as something poetic and personal, assuming that my reaction to Petrarch would be so profound that a story would emerge on its own. I thought that maybe if I filmed myself obscuring the monument to Petrarch in the park or reading his poems out loud, I would create a bold statement. But what that statement was, I didn't know for sure. And when I tried to follow my artistic vision, I only found frustration. Sonnet 32. If love or death but rend me not asunder, if I can free me from my binding trap, the yarn I have for spinning, it may hap, will give the century a cause for wonder. The ancient and the new I plan to plunder that. <laughs> the ancient and the new I plan to plunder and to make two truths so neatly overlap that, dare I say it, such a mighty clap I'll make that even in Rome you'll hear it thunder. the blessed threading my dear father left after him. Not the whole... Fuck. I have no clue what I'm fucking doing. I became anxious about my film and upset at myself, so I went into town with my friends Lexi and Erica and visited Petrarch's house to shoot some footage and maybe find some sort of inspiration. While walking through the house was interesting, it gave me no more insight into Petrarch than an internet search. The house isn't actually the house where he was born, but one built hundreds of years after his death on the foundations of the old one. The visit was starting to feel unproductive. But then, when we went upstairs to the balcony, my friends took the camera and they pointed it at me. Good. What do you think about your film? I I don't know. I don't know. It's... I have no clue what it is actually about. So, in this frame, you can see that there is a dead bird caught in the netting. How do you think that is representative of the end of Petrarch's life? I don't think it's representative of Petrarch's life. I think it's representative of me right now trying to make this film. <laughs> because... I'm just a dead bird caught in this net that I was like, hey, like, you can't get to Petrarch. What was <laughs> You're just a pigeon. <laughs> like, how can you, like, you can't nest here. <laughs> I wish I had known how silly I was to try to reach a person so distanced from me. My mark on literature will never compare to Petrarch's. I can only read his poems through translation, and even this monument blurs his true image, seeing as it was built by a fascist government. 
However, if I had known the difficulty I would face in my pursuit of this poet who lived and felt and wrote centuries before me, I hope that I would have tried all the same. Sonnet 192 Love opened my left side with his right hand and set in the center of my heart a green laurel so its color truly outshone every emerald and made it pale. The pens furrow the sighs from my side and the sweet moisture raining from my eyes so adorn it that a fragrance rises to the skies that could never come from any other foliage. Fame, honor, virtue, grace, chaste beauty in a heavenly dress are the roots of this noble plant. So I carry it in my heart wherever I am, a happy burden. And with true prayer, I adore it, bowing as if to something holy.